For over 30 years, we've been providing comprehensive care for those living with HIV in the Coachella Valley. You've likely driven by our now expanding campus on the corner of Sunrise and Vista Chino in Palm Springs. Or you may recognize us from our annual gala at the Palm Springs Convention Center. But whether you're a longtime supporter or hearing our story for the first time, tonight we'll give you a glimpse into the comprehensive quality and preventative care we provide to the entire community. This is DAP Health and welcome to the 27th Annual Steve Chase Humanitarian Awards. Good evening, everyone. I'm Scott Nevins, and as a proud board member of DAP Health and your host tonight, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. Tonight's Steve Chase Humanitarian Awards will break the mold of the traditional awards gala, and instead, we're gonna focus on celebrating the Coachella Valley, lifting up the community and paying tribute to the incredible and inspirational work that's being done right here in our own backyard. Tonight, we celebrate the Hope Begins With Health campaign raising funds and awareness for the work that DAP Health is doing, not just in HIV care, but in other key services being offered to those in need, regardless of who they are or their ability to pay. We've also got a great show for you tonight. We'll be sharing incredible stories of our work from our donors and clients from around the Coachella Valley. We'll also have amazing performances by activist and legend Cheryl Lee Ralph and beloved recording artist Shoshana Bean. You may have noticed that DAP has a new logo and a new name. I had a chat with our CEO, David Brinkman, to discuss the recent rebrand to DAP Health and the influence of art with its new logo. We're here in the lobby of the Barbara Keller Love Building, named after my good friend who was a mother figure in our community. Even though it was just completed, this wellness wing is rich in history because it pays homage to the fine arts of drag, comedy, and humanitarianism, specifically by calling out and raising up Les Dames du Soleil, AKA Douglas Woodmancy and Marshall Percy, life partners since 1976. Hi, David. Hey, thanks for doing the honors tonight. We're so appreciative of all your hard work, Scott. Oh, please. You know I love DAP. I'm on the board. This is a big night, so I'm thrilled to be here. But I did want to chat with you for a second about the rebranding, about the new wing, and of course, honoring Les Dames. You know, the story of Les Dames, tireless humanitarians in high heels, represents the story of DAP. It's grassroots. It's the LGBT community and our allies combating stigma, discrimination, fighting for health equity with love and fearlessness. Which has sort of been DAP's thing all along, right? Leading with love and fearlessly. Exactly. So part of this rebranding was this beautiful, colorful new logo. What was the artistic process behind developing it? I'm glad you love it too. It was created by Tom Dahl Designs. It's inspired by Mexican architect Luis Berragon. And our new logo conveys modernity, strength, freshness, and an innovative approach to healthcare that should be there for everyone. And we have the new wellness wing, the new logo, but those are just some smaller parts of a wider rebranding that's happening here. Why did you guys feel that right now was the time to rebrand DAP? It's super important, right? It's COVID, racism, poverty. Our country needs all partners of all human rights movements to come together, including the LGBT community, to step up, leverage all of our knowledge, our assets, and to create health equity, period. It's our evolution. And I know it's still very new, and I felt very fortunate to be uh, able to see the new logo early on, and I was so excited for the community to see it. What has the response been? Literally thousands of people in the last 12 months have come here seeking our help. And so the response of our donors and volunteers and our staff have been to band together to treat the health and mental health impacts of the last year. So the response has been both challenging, but beautiful. And speaking of the impact of last year, COVID-19 was horrible for everybody. And I felt like yet once again, history was repeating itself and DAP Health was there for the community, stepping up during a pandemic to take care of their own. And it was so beautiful to see, and I truly believe that stems from great leadership. And so from the entire board, staff, and the community, I just want to say thank you for leading us through this and everything else that you do to help DAP support the community in the way it does. Thank you, Scott. It's an honor.
I'd like to wish a heartfelt Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there who are watching tonight. We wouldn't be the people we are, the people we've become, without you. Now, the recent transformation of Desert Aid's project into DAP Health isn't the only thing that's been happening since we were able to last gather in person. The advent of the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent valley-wide lockdown required by it actually increased the need for our services. We had to think fast on our feet and adapt quickly to meet this growing demand. And here at DAP Health, our decades of experience fighting HIV and AIDS and the unique expertise we earned served us in the community well. We opened one of the first COVID-19 clinics in the Valley so we could test, counsel, educate, and treat. And now we've started providing vaccines to all eligible patients. We increased our mental health capabilities to provide help to individuals adversely affected by the fear and isolation and the anxiety and depression they fostered. We utilized telehealth so people who were hesitant or are unable to visit our campus in person didn't go without life-saving care. We also helped newly unemployed and uninsured individuals access health insurance, and we instituted home services to provide food, medicine, and other household necessities. Wherever we saw a void, we raced to fill it. We harnessed our knowledge, compassion, and infrastructure to once again affect positive change and make a real difference. And we did this while remaining committed to caring for nearly 9,000 of our current patients. Well into this new year, we realize that while great progress is being made every day, we're not quite out of the woods yet. So much more needs to be done. Tonight, we celebrate our Hope Begins With Health campaign, which is structured around our four important pillars, ongoing HIV care, access to health care, behavioral health, and COVID-19. Throughout this evening, you'll meet a lot of people who have worked tirelessly to provide for you and your neighbors during this last year. And in my book, they're all heroes, which is why we're shining a spotlight on them and lifting them up tonight. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for not only choosing to be with us, but for giving as generously as you can. Remember, every dollar counts, so every donation, no matter the size, makes a big difference. Thank you, and happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mom. My name is Laurie Kibbe, and I am a board member at DAP Health. I think the mis there's a misconception or has been in the past. When I started doing my research about DAP Health, it was known as Desert AIDS Project. And there was this concept that it only was available to men and, and people who were suffering or uh, with HIV. What I found out is no, that actually DAP Health, as it's now called, provided healthcare services to anybody who needed healthcare services. I found that quite inspiring. The rebranding of DAP Health takes us out of one lane and puts us in multiple lanes. It allows us to broaden our reach across the community. And um, our recent initiative, Hope Begins With Health, I think is a message for the entire Coachella Valley. So this rebranding allows us to fulfill on that promise of providing health care for everyone. Um, women have always been a passion for me, always. And there is a whole community of women throughout the entire Coachella Valley who are in need of the same services that the men um, and those with HIV in Palm Springs are in need of. They need help in finding support services. They need mental health uh, support services. They need health care. They need dental care. And DAP provides all of that. And as a supporter of that initiative, I'm really excited that we will be able to provide uh, services to women like Lawanda who have incredible stories being able to support the dignity of her and um, her journey is something that makes me, makes me really happy. My name is Lawanda Manigo. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I now reside out here in Desert Hot Springs and I've been out here for about seven years. When I came up into DAP Health, the support and the love and 
the community of not just women, also men, transgender, the just the whole community was so welcoming and so loving and so supportive and so ready to help to see me succeed, which helped me to believe that I could succeed and helped me to feel like even though I may be by myself a lot of times, I'm never alone. It was through DAB Health that I was able to get connected with other women that are experiencing some of the same issues that I'm going through and that were able to surround me with a community that I was able to discuss these issues with and that I can feel safe and secure with to discuss these issues because in the African-American community, it still is rather taboo to discuss HIV and AIDS in our community. But I believe this is an issue that needs to be discussed more for our future generations because we, I have a lot of nieces and nephews that are coming up that aren't experienced with some of the issues that I go through day to day. But I think it's very important that they become aware so that we can prevent the spread of this illness in the future. My message for future generations would be, do not let any illness or disease define you. You may be diagnosed with something, but that doesn't encumber all of who you are. As much as this has been a struggle for me, it has also been a blessing for me because I've grown as a woman and just as a person and just knowing who I am and where I stand in life and what my purpose is in life. My purpose in life is to let people know that HIV isn't the end of you. You can... You can push forward and you can move on and you can elevate yourself through your illness. You can come to know who you are and the strength that you possess through what you have to overcome each and every day when you're dealing with this illness. As I look forward to the future, I don't really have a big mindset on what it would entail, but what I do know is that I'm not alone in it because I have a community at DAP Health that's going to support me through it all, whatever may come. And now we have a musical performance by an award-winning actress, singer, best-selling author, and activist who's committed to bettering the lives of LGBTQ plus people and all of those living with HIV. From her hit show, Divas Simply Singing, please welcome the original dream girl, Cheryl Lee Ralph. December 20th, 1981. I made my Broadway debut in what has become the iconic musical of the 80s, because I say so, Dream Girls. Dream Girls was the best and worst of all times for me. The best, of course, was being the belle of the ball on Broadway. The worst was when a mysterious disease with no name just blew out the flame of creativity up and down Broadway. Well, the years have passed and we now know that mysterious disease as AIDS. And that was such an ugly time in America, a time when good people, kind people, people of all religions, faiths, and beliefs found it easy to just dump their sick children off on church stair steps like bags of used clothing for a rummage sale. Such an ugly time in America. But that's when I found my voice around raising HIV AIDS awareness, which believe it or not is still needed to this day. But in memory of Dream Girls, I have um, taken one of my favorite moments from the musical on stage and blended it with another moment from the screen version of Dream Girls. Put them together, and this is what I came up with.
There comes a time when the child's got to grow. There comes a time when the woman's got to go. Mama said, I am special. She said, I've got to prove I am just as good. I'm even better than. That's what she would say. Shine, Dina, shine. Shine, Dina, shine. And I'm going to show. Dining Out for Life is all about eating, and drinking, and giving back. It's an annual fundraiser that raises money for community-based organizations serving people living with or impacted by HIV. For many years, more than 80 desert restaurants have donated their day's gross sales to help raise almost $300,000 each year for client services at DAP Health. Fun fact, Palm Springs Dining Out for Life ranks in the top three fundraising markets in North America every year. Now, unfortunately, our regular food and beverage partners were hit hard by the pandemic this last year. Some have only just been able to get back up and running. So as a way to give back to them for their contributions, we're toasting all of them this evening and asking you, our viewers, to support these local eateries. <laughs> Dining Out for Life has become an event into itself where the community can come together, have fun, eat, drink, and enjoy themselves at the same time supporting the amazing work of DAP Health. You know, Dining Out for Life supports all of the locals that are part of the program. With over 9,700 clients at DAP, it's such an important thing for us to be involved and get involved in our community because they give back to us so much. So you can literally have you know, three, four, five different meals a day. You can start up from breakfast in the morning all the way to drinks at night. As a resort town, we already have so many businesses that are skewed towards travelers. So the best way to ensure that Palm Springs continues to thrive as a city is to do as the tourists do as locals and dine out and drink out and shop local and um, just support our own businesses. It's the small businesses in the desert community that are the fabric that make our community run. We all need to step up and support each other during times like these. And I think it's great that you guys have sort of turned the tables this time and encouraging people to uh, order 
order food to go or come and dine here and support us. And dine out for our life now. I would encourage everyone to come to all the restaurants and re retail shops uh, to uh, support us because we have all the COVID protocols that will make you safe around and at the same time helping the community and all the restaurants and retail. Everybody wins. The diners win, they love to have a good meal. We win because we have a lot of people experiencing our restaurants and enjoying them. We love the community and the community loves us. Not just us, but all the local restaurants and stores and it's really a very close-knit community. My name is Jeremy Hubbs. I'm the president of the Western Wind Foundation. The foundation and I have worked with the AP Health for a few years. We're donors, and I've also had the privilege of working with David Brinkman on a bunch of projects uh, here in the, in the Coachella Valley. I actually started out in the early 90s in Chicago as chairman of a group called Stop AIDS Chicago, which was all about prevention and education. With the Western Wind Foundation, I've continued to support uh, organizations in Chicago, in uh, all over the country, and here in, in the desert. When I got back to the Coachella Valley and I saw what was happening here and what could happen, I said, what I really want to do, I want to focus on what I call building the human infrastructure of the Coachella Valley. That was really important to me. I wanted to see other people realize their dreams. The name of the foundation, the Western Wind Foundation, a lot of people get confused. That doesn't have a, the name of somebody, that doesn't have the name of a donor. What does that mean? A Western wind is a wind that's a nourishing wind. It comes from the ocean, it brings nutrients, it makes things better, it makes things grow. That's what my foundation does. I want to work with organizations to help them get better, be able to better serve the people who are uh, who are in need and who are working in the community. That makes the whole community better. It makes all of us better. There are a lot of assets here that are not being fully used. And by that, I mean human assets. There are a lot of tremendous people who have a lot of energy, a lot of education, and a lot of passion. And uh, oftentimes they were overlooked by philanthropy and also economically out here in the desert. People kind of overlook this, this area. So what I really wanted to do was work with those groups and those people. And that's where I started to work with people like Alianza about how do we develop social strength? How do we develop economic strength? Uh, and how do we really let these communities be heard, uh, make their own decisions about how they want to move forward and help them to do that? And both the AP Health and Alianza have grown from the people they've worked with. They've grown from community. Uh, and the DAP certainly had its origins in people with HIV, people with AIDS, but they've grown that and spread more and more. They've served the gay community more and more, and now they're reaching outside of the gay community and the HIV community. So they're actually becoming a community health organization. Alianza is the exact same thing. Alianza grew out of a group of people who were dissatisfied, and they said, how can we make ourselves better? How can we improve things? What are the most important things to us? Transportation, healthcare, jobs, infrastructure, this didn't come from away, this came from here. And so when you put those two things together and you have leaders who are talking to their constituents and talking to each other in that way, you have just a great match. Hi, my name is Silvia Paz. I'm the founder and executive director of Alianza Coachella Valley. I originally grew up in Mexicali and I've been living here in the Coachella Valley since I was seven years old. Right now we're, you know, in the Salton Sea. The Salton Sea is surrounded by mostly agriculture. And intermingled in this agriculture, there's small living communities with very little access, uh, very little access to almost anything. When you're talking about health, I like to think about access to food, access to recreational spaces, to safe living conditions on top of having access to see a doctor, there is very few of those options offered for the people who live surrounding the Salton Sea. Alianza and DAP Health have a shared value of creating safe spaces for our communities. And
And in Alianza, we are talking about creating safe spaces, not only in a doctor's office, but also in a council, um, a chamber meeting, and in the, in the communities. So the common thread between us, I really believe it's about this shared value of safe spaces for the community that we serve. What we want to see in the community surrounding the Salton Sea is that health is accessible in all of its form, not just going to the doctor, but also um, having the built infrastructure that's going to allow them to exercise, to eat healthy, and to even um, have good mental health access. And that's the work that Alianza strives to do, to bring together both the policy implementation with the lift experience and try that both of those can meet halfway so that we can have solutions that will ultimately result in a better living environment um, for everyone who calls the Coachella Valley home. As you can tell, the work we do here at DAP Health couldn't happen without the constant help we get from our friends. Speaking of, here's a treat from one of my friends and a friend of DAP Health, Shoshana Bean. Stand up and walk out on me. So come on and lend me your ear, and I'll sing you a song. I will try not to sing out of key. Oh, babe, I get by with a little help from my friend, and I'm gonna try with a little help from my friend. When my love is away, does it worry you to be alone? How do I feel at the end of the day? Am I sad because I'm on my own? No, no. Cause I get by with a little help from my friend. Oh, and I'm gonna try. Somebody to love Could it be anybody? I just want somebody to love yeah.
We all know that mothers come in all shapes, sizes, and varieties. Birth, adoptive, chosen, caretaker. Tonight on Mother's Day and during National Nurses Week, we pay tribute to all of them and to the maternal figures who have lifted them up through the years. I just want to say happy Mother's Day to my mom, Laura Nunez. Mom, thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you continue to do for Mackenzie, Martin, and myself. I don't know what I would do without you and I love you to the moon and back. This is going to be my first Mother's Day without my mom. The greatest gift I ever received in my life was her. Mom, I love you. I feel your presence every day. Thank you for always being my biggest champion, my biggest supporter. I miss you, Mom, and I love you. Wishing my mother, Anne, and my sister, Andre, a happy Mother's Day all the way on the beautiful Mississippi Gulf Coast. Today, I would like to honor my mother, Maria Solis, who has unfortunately passed away last year. Mom, I know you're not with me today, but I know you're looking down on me, and I just want to say that I love you and miss you, and thank you for everything that you have done for me. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and especially my mother. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you, and I just want the whole world to know, if they didn't know already, that you are amazing. Hi, Mom. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Um, I know that it's been a very difficult year, but you're very strong and you've held our family together. Moms are responsible for a lot. My mom taught me to how great it is to volunteer, how much better it is to give than to receive. And to my mother, you've done me a full country of the hospital. You have taught me the importance of resilience, working hard, and being kind to people would like to wish Lisa Watson and Beverly Thompson a very special and happy Mother's Day. Hi mom, this video is for you. You're my biggest inspiration and influence. Thank you for giving me all the best things in life. And to my mom in particular, I want to thank you Henrietta for your wisdom, advocacy, and compassion for others less fortunate. I wish you were here today to see what we're doing at DAP Health. You would be so proud. And happy Mother's Day to my mom, who is also a healthcare worker. Happy Mother's Day. Mwah. Thank you. Let's have some Chardonnay. <laughs> happy Mother's Day, DAP family. I'm Marcia Martin, member of the advisory board of United Nations Program on HIV and AIDS. And I want to say thank you to all of your donors and all of your supporters for saying yes over the years and throughout the years. DAP has been able to expand its much needed and deeply appreciated services and programs due to your support. And I want to say thank you for supporting your team to join me and many others in Kigali, Rwanda, where we met with community members, we met with members of the LGBT community, we met with ministers of health and others to talk about HIV and community services and the best way to bring much needed services to people who often are left behind and are often not thought about. Hi, I'm Keisha Howerson, and I am a client at DAP Health, very happy client at DAP Health. I'm known on stage as Keisha, Keisha D, and um, it's kind of my stage name. My kids just call me mom. My grandkids call me punky, so, but you can call me Keisha D. was just a real fluke that I got to uh, come in contact with DAP. Some friends of mine after watching me just suffer and was in a lot of pain and had gone down to about 105 pounds and they had given me about 12 months to maybe a year and a half to live. So this other doctor had told me within about a week I was being wheeled into DAP, the facility. And I mean, just walking in 
you're greeted with a smile and you're greeted with people that say, welcome. When I got into Dr. Morris's office, the first thing out of his mouth was, you know, oh, what's going on? And I said, well, I just really want to know what I need to do to get into hospice. I know I only have 12 months to live. And he said, no, that doesn't seem right. We have to do some tests. Let's, let's talk about this. I'm here to help you live. I know you feel like dying. I tell you, walking in to see Dr. Morris and hardly being able to even talk to Dr. Morris saying, trust me, you're going to be back on stage. I'm going to watch you on stage. I'm going to applaud you. I'm going to be there and applaud that day when you take that stage at the Purple Room again. Because I remember just telling him, I'm in my happiest place at the Purple Room. And I waited a lot of years to be here. It was a place I really wanted to sing at. I felt it was gonna be my home. And I got really scared that I wasn't gonna come back. And then when COVID hit and I was so sick, and I said, wow, I'm gonna like die and not even able to come back on stage maybe one more time. And Dr. Moore said, stop, I'm gonna be there and you're gonna be back. And our eyes are like the play, our eyes are, our eyes are afraid of our love, and I do it a thousand times again. So I'm really thrilled and happy to be able to find that fighter inside of me through the nurses and through the doctors at DAP because Without their help, I probably would have been in a hospice situation or maybe not even having this conversation with you today. My family thanks DAP. My grandchildren thank DAP. I thank them. If you're a donor and you're giving to DAP, thank you. Thank you for allowing the doors to stay open for people like me. Because if the doors hadn't been open, I wouldn't have the opportunity to be sitting here today to tell my story that I'm still going. And we can't do it. It can't be done without the donors and without the help. It's, yeah, and so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Tonight's show is about sharing inspiring stories and the incredible work that's being done by DAP Health in our desert community. Work that cannot be done without the generosity of supporters just like you. I'm here now inside Revivals in Cathedral City to talk about the different ways you can contribute to DAP Health. Those in the know understand that Revivals is a retail brand that offers both resale items and new merchandise. With locations here in Cathedral City, Palm Desert, Palm Springs, and soon to be Indio, it's one of the best ways to support DAP Health since 100% of the proceeds go directly back to the organization. I encourage you to splurge and buy that Mother's Day gift you've been eyeing. You know, just for the health of it. There are plenty of ways for you to give tonight, helping us reach our goals for the Hope Begins With Health campaign. You can head to our online silent auction by registering at daphealth.org slash SCHA. We have some one-of-a-kind collector's items like signed memorabilia donated by the legendary Del Shores and autographed mannequins from Project Runway All-Stars. These include signatures from celebrities like RuPaul, Deborah Messing, and Whoopi Goldberg. FYI, you can keep bidding until the auction closes next Sunday, May 16th at 6.30 p.m. You can also make a donation right now by texting HOPE to 760-330-2219. 
every dollar counts. So any donation, no matter the amount, makes a huge difference in the lives of the people that DAP Health cares for. My name is Al Jones, and I'm on the Partner for Life leadership team. So I do support the uh, DAP's uh, behavioral health program. There's a great demand for behavioral mental health programs for counseling, particularly in this COVID era too, with the isolation that's been occurring. But I have a personal reason as well. My partner or husband of 26 years, Mark Bird, um, back three years ago, decided to stop taking his medication. He was HIV positive, had been for over 30 years. Men who have been on uh, medication for those number of years, they're finding for whatever reason, and they're doing research about it, can end up becoming depressed. And that depression leads to stopping their medication. He hit his depression so effectively from all of his friends and family and me that none of us knew he was experiencing depression. Had we known, we would have been able to get him the assistance that he needed, and DAP had the assistance, but we didn't know. And so that has really grown on me to be aware and alert, to watch for people, particularly in this COVID environment. If I have any sense that there's any kind of depression from the isolation, uh, it's important to get the counseling that you need, and DAP has an incredible uh, behavioral health program. A as a result of Mark's death, David Brinkman came to me, the CEO of, of DAP Health, and asked if I would be uh, interested in having a naming grant after Mark and making a contribution and raising funds. <clears throat> Sorry. And I said, absolutely, I'd be glad to. I really was delighted to. And so we talked about it. And so um, I ended up making a contribution and it was a matching grant, uh, a naming grant, to name it the Mark Bird Behavioral Health Clinic. And it was the right thing at the right time. And I've been delighted that I made that commitment. There, there's somebody at the DAP that you need to be aware of, and that's Jill, Dr. Jill Gover. She's head of the Behavioral Health Clinic. She's absolutely amazing. She's very sensitive, but moreover, she's very intuitive. And that's, that intuitive nature is what's so important in a counselor or a therapist, that to be able to match a client uh, with the appropriate therapist is, is really a, an art that you can't replicate unless it's really innate. I'm known as Dr. G in the community, and my name is Jill Gover, and I'm a clinical psychologist and the behavioral health manager at DAP Health. Well, of course, we've seen um, tremendous demand uh, as stress surges across the nation and across the world, and it's no different here in Coachella Valley. There is a tremendous demand for mental health services as people are grappling with so many different stressors uh, brought on by the pandemic. This um, pandemic has been very triggering for many because it reminds all of us who went through those horror years, the early days of the AIDS epidemic. There's been a lot that has been brought up emotionally for long-term survivors, remembering those, those painful memories uh, and also needing to isolate and needing to be so very careful during COVID uh, because of the increased vulnerability and comorbidities. I think one thing that we learned from this pandemic is that uh, it's very important that we use the technology that we have available to us. We were able to pivot very quickly in this pandemic uh, to telehealth and I don't see us going back. I think that that's going to be increasingly important as we move forward from now forever. Uh, being able to access the technology in a way that increases availability because, as we know, the need for mental health services will only increase as time goes on. I want to thank all of the donors, Partners for Life, everyone who supports the fundraisers that DAP does, uh, especially the, the Steve Chase Humanitarian Awards, um, and a particular shout out to Al Jones who has made a gift uh, and naming the new behavioral health clinic uh, in honor of his late partner. It's all of these contributions that make it possible for us to do our work here at DAP, and for that I'm just enormously grateful. Good evening, my name is Patrick Jordan and I'm the board chair for DAP Health. Thank you for tuning in to the Steve Chase Humanitarian Awards tonight. Earlier, you saw the names of the incredible donors from our Hope Begins With Health campaign. The generosity of the community in the Coachella Valley is truly astounding. 
Tonight's Steve Chase Humanitarian Awards might be a little different from years past, but the spirit of giving continues to honor the legacy of our event's namesake, Stephen Chase. To everyone who's donated so far, thank you. I'd also be remiss if I didn't take a moment to acknowledge my event co-chairs who you've already seen tonight, Lori Kibbe and Kevin Bass, and of course, Scott Nevins for hosting the show. Each year on the night of the event, we strive to raise additional funds for the important work DAP Health is doing in our community. If you can, please text to give or donate online so that we can continue to raise funds for health equity and health care for all. Every donation, no matter the amount, goes a long way. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and enjoy the rest of the evening. Desert Regional Medical Center and Desert Care Network have enjoyed a long working partnership with DAP Health. We share not only a history of caring for persons living with HIV, but also a commitment to serving the community during the pandemic. In the early 1990s, when everyone was filled with fear about HIV AIDS, Desert Regional Medical Center took a leadership role in our community. We created a special care unit at the hospital to fight the epidemic. In 1995, AIDS became the leading cause of death for Americans ages 25 to 55. That year, a group of dedicated volunteers worked with the hospital to transform an entire floor of our East Tower into a home away from home for our patients. They turned clinical hospital rooms into comfortable living spaces. Today, our commitment to continue to partner with DAP Health to eliminate HIV AIDS is as steadfast as ever. In 2013, Desert Regional embraced DAP's vision and donated a million and a half dollars to become the lead sponsor of Get Tested Coachella Valley. This effort sent mobile testing vehicles to every corner of the region. Over the course of the three-year campaign, DAP completed 80,000 HIV tests. In total, Desert Care Network donated $5 million to the Desert AIDS Project to improve the health of our community. Like DAP Health, Desert Care Network is committed to diversity, inclusion, and LGBTQ equity. We are proud to have been named a leader in LGBTQ healthcare equality by the Human Rights Campaign Foundation. Tonight, we commend DAP Health for its immediate and thorough pandemic response. Its experience with HIV AIDS allowed it to quickly transition to serve our community during the pandemic. DAP provided not only additional healthcare services, but testing, vaccinations, counseling, telehealth, and much more. DAP Health, your team members are heroes. We are honored to be partnered with you. Thank you. My name is Dr. Ann Du, and I was a volunteer in the COVID clinic from March last year until January of this year. I was very interested when uh, I heard that there was a new virus. I got in touch with DAP, and Dr. Morris told me they were developing the COVID-19 clinic. It was going to be called the COVE, and yes, they probably could use me. Originally, we were just taking calls uh, to take care of the people, get them scheduled for testing. But then as more people became COVID positive and were discharged from the hospital, we also started keeping in touch with those people to make sure that they were doing well at home. Sometimes at the end of the day when we get home, we were exhausted because so many of these people had questions about the virus. They had friends who didn't believe it and were in denial. They had family members who had it. They were exposed to somebody at work. So it was good that DAP had their clinic because there were not any information posts throughout the valley. Everybody else just set folks up for the uh, testing. So I felt real pleased to be able to work at DAP. What made the COVE work was that there were supporters in our community who donated money and allowed the COVE to get tests, both the tests for the PCR and also for the early antibody test. 
the cove could not have moved as swiftly as it did to help protect Palm Springs, Palm Desert, and the whole valley if it hadn't been for all of the donors. And how can we thank you? All we can say is you have saved lives. You have touched hearts. And because of you, we were able to help people find peace in this quarantine that they may not have been able to find otherwise. My name is Mike Federson, and uh, my husband Tom and I uh, are longtime and really strong supporters of DAP Health. The change from just being an exclusive HIV AIDS organization to serving the community at large is something that I think it was a beautiful outgrowth of the HIV AIDS organizations because those organizations were all founded originally. They didn't provide any medical care. They were, they were supportive care medicine. HIV AIDS has become a long-term manageable illness. And so there was this incredible organization that was ready there to step in and find uh, this other underserved need. When the pandemic first started, um, I knew it was gonna be bad. I've been reading about it for decades. Uh, I knew it was coming to our shores. David Brinkman, the CEO of DAP Health, is, is a personal friend, and on a personal friend level, he told me what was that DAP Health was gonna open a COVID clinic. It just, for both Tom and I, it was like, oh man, that's something that really needs to be, to be done. And so uh, we, Tom and I offered to help financially, and fortunately we were able to do that, and um, it's been very successful and really has served the community well. The mission of providing help for HIV AIDS is, you know, it's, it's still a core principle, but not having universal health care means a lot of people go without health care and basic health needs. And in, other, in order to have a really healthy, thriving community, Everybody needs to have access to quality health care. And so uh, DAP Health really f fills that gap in the Coachella Valley. It's critically important to the community and therefore to me and my husband. I never get tired of that view. And as I look out over the breathtaking Coachella Valley, I'm reminded that everywhere you look, DAP serves. DAP is here for all of us, and its services are made possible by the generosity of donors far and wide. The impact that DAP makes is a product of this beautiful community. And now to close out our show, please welcome back the sensational Shoshana Bean. Another round of bullets hits my skin 
will fire away Cause today I won't let the ship sink in We are bursting through the barricades And we're reaching for the sun We are warriors Yeah, that's what we've become Won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For your glory when the sharpest words want to cut me down I'm gonna send a flood to drown them out I'm brave and I'm bruised I am who I'm meant to be This is me Look out, cause here I come And I'm marching on to the beat I drum I'm not scared Make no apologies, this is me. I hope you've enjoyed our journey around the Coachella Valley tonight, and I hope that the stories you've heard have inspired you. From our behavioral health expansion to our response to the COVID-19 pandemic and our groundbreaking work in HIV care, DAP has proven itself to be a foundation in this community. I'd like to thank our special guests, our performers, and our donors. But most importantly, thank you for tuning in and giving generously in whatever way you can to support our ongoing work. I'm Scott Nevins. Happy Mother's Day. Take care of yourselves and each other. Good night.